What's your least favorite show? That gets my goat. Well, okay, sorry to, to keep driving this into the ground, but we, we got to fill 30 days of <laughs> night. There's two things I wanted to talk about, both from the same show. One was a wonderful episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer where Xander wants to make his ex-girlfriend jealous. And so he goes to a witch to have her cast a spell that the ex-girlfriend will fall madly, passionately, crazily in love with him so that he can break her heart like she broke his. And the spell goes wrong and every woman falls madly in love with Xander except for the girl that he wanted. And it's a hilarious episode because like even like Buffy's mom, even like the school nurse and the you know lunch lady or whatever, just pawing at him, trying to get to him. And like the female vampires come after him and stuff like that. And it becomes, you know, like a, a zombie thing with this giant crowd of women reaching for him and trying to get him and stuff. So there is a downside to being super <laughs> hyper attractive, although, you know, I, I don't imagine that even Ryan Gosling gets that kind of, maybe in Japan would get a mob of slavering young women. But uh, the more significant Buffy the Vampire Slayer story, though, is the character of Angel. And Angel is a good vampire. He's a vampire who has a soul, unlike all the other vampires who are soulless. But Angel has a, a curse put upon him that he can never be happy. He can never be truly happy. And the second that he actually finds true happiness, he will lose that soul. And we find that out the hard way in an episode where he and Buffy finally get together. And from that point on, we know that Angel can never fall in love. Angel can never have sex, ever. But he can be eternally young and super strong and really handsome. All the things that I guess I would be in this perfect version of myself, except for I guess I could go out in the daylight. Can't, it's essentially he can never get it up. <laughs> Seriously. Uh -huh. And apparently women found this unbelievably hot because suddenly you get all the great things in a man without that awful, terrible thing that is in a man. Was that too nasty a thing to say? <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean for it to be. I, maybe I did. It's just you and me. I mean, women were just like, oh, my gosh, the perfect man. Now you're laughing. Is it sound misogynist what I'm saying? I don't mean for it to. This is how women actually responded. I'm not saying, oh, I'll bet there were some women out there. Women were just like, oh my gosh, perfection, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You're still smirking. What, is it the tone that I'm saying it in? I don't know. I think you have the potential to be offensive with that comment. I guess we'll see. What? No, I, okay. Help me out. Show me the error of my ways. How am I being offensive? I'm likening your scenario to what actually happened with a fictional character. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fair to say that Edward from the Twilight series is obviously a pale imitation of Angel. People have claimed that Stephanie Meyer is not ripping off Buffy and Angel in any way. But Edward is certainly down that path. And he could never have sex with Bella because he would lose control and he was too strong and his animal instincts would come out and he'd eat her. Right? Mm -hmm. And I know you have heard women say Edward is the perfect man. Perfect. He even can go out in the sunlight and he gets prettier. <laughs> right? Am, am I okay? Was that offensive? Okay, let me just rewind. Tell me what it was that I said that was offensive, and I will apologize if I didn't mean it that way. I, I think it's the generalization. I think that some people find offensive when you say women only want. This kind of a thing. Okay, no, no women want to have Did sex. I say all women? I, and if I did, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I, I meant there were many women who loved that idea of Angel as the perfect man. And, and yeah, if I said all, it was a Freudian slip. No, it wasn't a Freudian slip either. It was a slip <laughs> of the... T it was a lie is what it was. It was <laughs> women are awesome and... Help me out here. Give me the words to fix what I've said that was wrong. And I didn't mean all if I said all. And hopefully you'll take it in that vein, there were women who, who latched onto that and said that that's wonderful and that's ideal. Women we know would jump on that. Is, is that offensive? 
I I know what you mean. Okay, there are people am I wrong? That we know that would like that. All right, and and and, and, and that's and, not obviously all women, but there are people that uh, I know that uh, think that way. And the similar idea we, we talked about a show that we both really enjoyed because of its sick sense of humor and and stuff was that show Pushing Daisies, which is all based on that. He resurrects this girl that he loves, but if he touches her again, she's dead forever. I know people, women, and maybe men too, but we're talking about women here, that found that irresistibly romantic. Just, oh my gosh, kind of thing. It, it was fairy tale-ish, you know? And, and the show was almost a fairy tale with its like magic and stuff, but it, it's and just- Dale narrating. It, it takes love- and, and and melts it down to its purest, innocent Disney cartoon origin. You know, that's what love once was. It's mythical. Mm-hmm. That, that's bullshit. There's nothing like that in reality. Right. I mean, I, I think even caterpillars copulate. <laughs> I, I I might be wrong. Maybe they wait until they're, you know, they come of they age and they're butterflies. butterflies. Yeah, yeah well, but, but <laughs> I could see. I, I know I've dug myself in deep and there's no getting out. But, you know, throw me a shovel. You can throw it sharp end first hey, uh, if you want. But you got, you got something on your face there. <laughs> What's that? It's from uh, Army of Darkness. Okay. He's burying the one guy and he's like, hey, you'll never get the Necronomicon. And he goes, hey, you got, you got something on your face. He goes, ah, ah. and then he throws a shovel of dirt on him. Cool. But we've all seen movies where a man pretends to be impotent. And he's like, oh, I, can't, I cannot become aroused around a woman. And women just go crazy about it. It's like, oh, I'm going to be the girl that, that get, you know what I mean? It, it suddenly become a challenge or, or I'm going to pretend that I'm gay and the woman will find me irresistible because she'll try and win me over. You know, I've never been with a woman because they're icky. <laughs> and, that, and women are like, oh, that kind of thing. Because maybe there is a fairy tale aspect of the handsome prince that will come along and he doesn't have carnal desire. He Everything is pure. All of his motives are completely above board. Um, he wants nothing. He would never want to debase this perfect person. And they hold on to that. Not all women, of course, but, the, but maybe some yearn for that. And I've talked to people that love the Stephanie Meyer books because of that ab. ab I almost said abstinence because of that aspect, a pure, undefiled, non-physical version of love, a a perfect man who wants me for who I am inside, not for, I don't know. I I friggin' hate the Twilight books, as I've told you. (laughs) So I can't quite get my mind around it, but I've tried to see, we've talked about Twilight endlessly. And I know that there are people like on the internet that are like, okay, shut up about Twilight already. Right. We've, we've run into people. They act like it's, Vietnam or they act like it's the Holocaust or something like that. It's like, please stop bringing that up. But it's, it's a phenomenon. Twilight never happened. <laughs> That's right. Mel Gibson's mom was saying, but uh, it's, it's something that I suppose speaks to a certain part of the female readership of a more innocent kind of love. And also the idea of a prince that will come and sweep me off my feet and Take me away from all of this, all of this mundanity. What's the word? I think it is mundanity. Mundamity. That. It, the, the Cinderella idea of somebody who's great and looks around and he sees all these ordinary people and he focuses on one and says, that one is extraordinary. That one is better than all the others. And I'm going to take them up on the hill to be my bride and to be the queen and the castle because she's special, because she's unique, because she's beautiful, even if nobody else sees it or whatever. I Maybe I'll go as far as to say nearly all women can grab onto that and say, that's awesome. That's cool. That's a dream that I had as a child. And and what, you know what? Fuck it. Everybody wants to feel special. Everybody wants to feel like they're better than the people around them or that somebody recognizes them and says, you know what? I like you best of all the people that I've hung out with today. Yeah. I was going to say that goes beyond even just women. Pretty much all people would like to have that happen to them. And if the book had been written better, maybe I could have latched onto that too. Because it's something that we talked about earlier this month is just it doesn't matter if it's a male or female protagonist. If you can 
you know, get into their heads and, 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 and relate to them and, right. and root for them. And that, and if, if you can't, if they're a douchebag, I don't know if it matters if they're a guy or a girl, right. You'll forever be alienated by them. And it's like, I can't relate to a person like that. I can't mm-hmm. relate to a person that would sell out a little boy so that they could be beautiful. <laughs> right. Well, I'm sorry. I, can't. I can only unsubscribe. And, hey, Rage quit. Oh, stop. That gets my goat. We'll be continued next time. Run while you still can. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Apparently, the creative in Creative Commons doesn't mean anything. <laughs>